235 day two and we're on page 188 page 188 and the quality that we're developing this week is conscientious this curriculum would never have come to be if it were not for conscientious people D.W. Rutledge and I were the first ones to develop this curriculum and we developed it uh, way back in the 80s. And then I went to work for Zig Ziglar, who talked us into writing a book or making it into a book so that any young coach could take what we had done and do it with his players. We thought that was just going to be just like that. We could just give them our notes and it would be over with. Jill Tibbles was our editor. And there's never been a more conscientious human being on this earth or a more beautiful editor than Jill Tibbles. And she would meet with DW <laughs> uh, every month and then she would, no, we can't do that. No, that's wrong. She was not real nice to us. She was very conscientious, very detail oriented. She was going to make sure it was right. If it had Zig Ziglar's name on it, it was going to be right. She was the most conscientious editor you could have ever found. The curriculum got published. And then I went to work to, to try to market it and try to get it all over this country in the early 1990s or early 2000, I'm sorry. And went to work with a guy named Gary Halverson who was just as conscientious as Jill Tibble was about being first class, being organized, and doing the things that we should do. That made the curriculum even better. And then when I retired, we developed a ministry team, Changing Lives Ministry. Now, we had to get away from the Christian part of it because there's so many public schools and so many places like that that will not allow you to teach the Christian faith in your curriculum. So we have stayed away from that. And the Changing Lives team, Dan Alexander, Laura and David Everett, Mary Parker, and Randy Eggstead were so conscientious about delivering a better curriculum than what DW and I had put together. And next year's curriculum, with your help, is going to be better than this one. Because if you develop the role model of being conscientious, you're going to want to have a better curriculum for us to put forth. So every year this should get better. There ought to be better stories, more detail, more things done. If you're conscientious, you are a very detail-oriented person. Now, my grandson, his name is T.J. Winslow, and TJ came to live with us after he graduated from high school in Houston. And it was a real shock to him. We lived way out in the country, and it was a real rural part of the, come in a very small town. And when he came to live with us, he was driving the truck one day out of the, out of the driveway, and he got off the driveway and got into the, the pasture a little bit, and he dug big ruts into the pasture. Well, my brother actually owned the land that we lived on. And so he came over and he was very mad. And he said, uh, TJ dug some ruts beside the driveway and he needs to fix those. And I said, okay, he dug them, he can fix them. So I told TJ, I said, you need to fix those ruts. And it was really the first time that something like that had happened when he was living with us. I'm telling you, that guy went out there and he dug up all that dirt and he leveled it off back again, put the grass back on it, and it looked like it had never been disturbed. And I was so impressed with the conscientiousness of him. He was so detailed, he was gonna make it exactly right. 
Later on, my, my wife would mow. She got a zero turn line mower and she wouldn't even let me own it. But she would mow the yard, or not yard, back then it, we had about two acres. And she would tell TJ to go out and pick up the sticks before she mowed. Because there would be pieces of limb out there and so forth that she couldn't mow without hurting the mower. And one day she told me, she said, I feel so sorry for that boy. And I said, why do you feel sorry for him? She said, he picks up little bitty twigs. When I tell him to pick up sticks, he picks up any piece of wood <laughs> that's in that yard. That's conscientious. When you're going to do something, you do it and you do it right. We have within us a conscience. And if we don't do it right, we feel bad. Now, in T.J. Winslow, his conscience is highly developed. He is a great role model for conscientiousness because when he's going to do something, he does it exactly right. Now, he, he from out of Bell, where he, he lived with us, he went to Harding University, played football at Harding, became an All-American, became the most valuable player in the conference, and is today playing professional football. Why? Conscientiousness. He was the most conscientious grandson or, or person that you could really have. And you see it in little things. The ruts needed fixing. Well, what my brother really meant for him to do is just go out and flatten them out. He didn't mean to dig them up, redo them, plant grass, do all that. When Mary told him to go out and pick the sticks up out of the yard, she didn't mean the twigs. She meant just the big pieces that she couldn't mow. But he was so conscientious, he did it all. When you turn in a paper, are you conscientious? Do you turn your paper in to make it readable and legible and in perfect form? When John Hancock signed the Declaration of Independence, He's the only guy, if you look at the Declaration of Independence, there's one signature that you can certainly tell whose it is because it is written so large and so plain. It is definitely John Hancock. And when they ask him, why did you sign it so large and so plain? He said, I want to make sure if King George reads it that he knows I signed it. Conscientious, very conscientious. You need to be a role model for conscience, which means whatever you do, do it right. Amen.